This is a standard variable declaration in Java. You've got the variable type, here an int, followed by a variable name, and then an assignment to the value 10. It's all good, it looks familiar, and it works fine. The compiler compiles it, and the sun still rises tomorrow. Okay, now with Java 10 onwards, you can also do the same thing using a var declaration. And guess what? This works. So what's going on here? Don't you have to declare types in Java anymore? Has the language lost its type safety? What does Java think it is? JavaScript? What is happening here? Well, let's find out. From its inception, Java has always been a type-safe language. The compiler has to know at any time what the type of a certain variable is, be it a primitive or a custom class type. Well, rest assured that that hasn't changed in Java, okay? Let's get that out of the way first. Java is still a type-safe language. However, it's also true that you can now use the var keyword to declare variables in Java like this. So what is this var keyword and what does it do? It's a new addition to the language called local variable type inference. It's actually very simple. When you're declaring variables where the type of the variable can be inferred by the compiler, you can drop the type and just say var instead. All it does is offer a syntactic shortcut. It's just to avoid some boilerplate code when it comes to declaring variables in certain situations. Remember this, you cannot use var all the time. We'll look at when you can use it and when you cannot. Let's look at this variable declaration and assignment, int i equals 10. The compiler can see the right-hand side and know that you're trying to assign an integer value of 10 to this variable. So in this case, you can drop the int here and just call it var. The compiler infers the type is an int from the right-hand side, and so it assumes that it's an int. These two are exactly the same. This works with primitives, and class types, simple type inference. You might look at this and go, well, what's the big deal? It's not even saving you keystrokes here. It's just like, what's the point? It does save keystrokes sometimes. It makes your program less verbose. So for example, instead of string, hello world, you can use var hello world. Or consider this gem here. This thing can become this slightly better. And don't think that I'm kidding here. This is an actual class name from a popular Java framework. You know, stuff like this is the reason why people make fun of us Java developers. But, well, I'm not going to go into that now. Back to var. There are other instances where this var keyword helps. You might be familiar with type inference with generics. For example, you must have seen this code. Here you're creating an array list of strings and you're assigning it to an array list variable. Thanks to generic type inference, you could do this in Java for quite some time now. You could just skip that string here on the right-hand side and the compiler would infer the generic type as string from the left-hand side. So this would work. But now, with this new type inference feature, you can totally skip specifying the type on the left-hand side and just stick a var here. But now this means you're gonna have to go back to add those generic type declarations, specify them explicitly on the right-hand side because you have to specify it somewhere, right? So this is how we would use var keywords here. So we've gone from this to this. The right-hand side doesn't just have to be a value or a constructor. You can assign method calls or other operators. So for example, these examples work. Couple of observations here. In order to use var, you have to have a right-hand side. Pretty obvious, in order to do type inference, the compiler needs to have something to infer from. So if you have something like this, i can be an int, it can be a string, or it can be any of the infinite types to create and use in Java. So this will not work. This is not JavaScript, remember. The compiler still needs to know the type of all the variables at all times. So this is the first constraint with using var. You can use it only when there is a variable declaration with an assignment. It doesn't matter even if you have the assignment on the very next line, all right? So this is not okay. It has to be 
on the same line. Second, in our array list example, it's actually very common to do something like this. You can have an array list instance created on the right hand side and then assigned to the interface type, which is the list type on the left hand side. Uh, what we're doing here is a common pattern called coding to interfaces. You have an instance type as a value being held by a reference type that's an interface. Now what would happen if I were to replace this with a var? Well, it wouldn't work the same way. With explicit definitions, the names variable was of type list of strings. But now with the var keyword, the compiler infers the type from the right hand side, which happens to be an array list of strings here. So it's a slightly different thing. So in this case, you cannot use the var keyword to get what you want. If you want to assign uh, an instance type to an interface type, in this kind of an example, you have to be explicit. Another important restriction to note is in the name. It's a local type inference. You cannot have a var be a class variable, even if you have a value assigned to it. So in this example, this would not work. Okay, how about method declarations? So let's say you have a method that adds two numbers, all right? So it's an int add, which takes in two integers, and it returns the sum. Can I make the declaration of a and b to be vars? Well, no, the compiler will complain because there is nothing to infer what the type should be. Again, remember, the compiler needs hints about what the type is. The compiler should now go search for all the invocations to see what types are passed in and all that. And no, it doesn't do that. What about the return type here? That's obviously an int because we are adding two ints here, right? Can that be changed to a var? Unfortunately, no. Although the compiler could technically infer this, the language designers have decided not to do that because this could make things a little bit complicated. And maybe you could have a method that returns two different types, then what would the compiler infer? It can get confusing. So at this time, you cannot use var for method declarations in Java. Next, let's look at Lambda expressions. There's some amount of type inference that happens in Lambda expressions anyway with the arguments and the return. But how does the value of a Lambda expression itself play with the var keyword? So let's say you have a Lambda expression like this. Can you do something like this? Can you assign it using a var to a newly declared variable? This will result in an error. This is not a valid use of the var keyword. Why? Well, think about it. The compiler really cannot infer and identify one type based on all that it sees in this line, based on all it sees in the right-hand side. There could be any number of functional interfaces that could be used as a type for this lambda that's on the right-hand side. Right, so the compiler cannot choose one. So this is not allowed. Okay, so we've looked at a few usages of the var keyword and actually several places where it cannot be used. As you can tell, it's not a big groundbreaking new feature to the, to the Java language and it's just a syntactical construct. In fact, the var keyword does not manifest in the JVM at all. After the compiler is done compiling your code, it disappears. The compiler knows what the type is and that's what it takes from there on. It's just a convenience shortcut to the way Java already works and nothing has changed post compilation. One interesting thing to note about the var keyword before we wrap up is the fact that it is not actually a reserved word. Yes, var is a valid variable name and the compiler does not complain. If I do int var equals 10, in fact, you can even do this. The compiler is smart enough to detect that the first var indicates the variable declaration and the second var is the name of the variable. This is valid, but this is one of those things that you should know, but should never use. Don't create variable names with var. I hope I don't have to explain why that's a bad idea. All right, so I hope this video was helpful. Have fun using var in places where it saves you some verbosity in your code. And um, also check out some of these other videos. Thanks for watching.